New images tonight of the site where a Minnesota National Guard helicopter went down, killing the three crew members aboard. Army investigators are set to arrive in Minnesota today. And tonight, flags across the state are flying at half staff in honor of those three soldiers. We have live team coverage of the crash investigation. We begin with Boyd Hoopert, who is live near the crash site just south of St. Cloud. Well, you know, there was a beautiful sunset here just about 20 minutes ago. Stood in contrast to that somber scene just beneath it. Actually, several things of beauty that we've seen today. Among them, the flag that was erected behind, behind me by neighbors who just wanted to do what they could to help. Quiet is the norm along Mill Creek near Marty, which made the sound nothing like this. Shelley Krippner heard yesterday all the more jarring. It almost sounds like there was a train going to come through my house. My house just like rattled and made a noise. My windows were rattling. Still, Shelly could not imagine what had just transpired roughly a quarter mile from her home. Three people dead, all members of the Minnesota National Guard, on a maintenance flight in a Black Hawk helicopter. It's very sad. It makes me really sad because I know that people lost loved ones, you know. Today, law enforcement officers and military members in fatigues came and went from the crash site, while neighbors grieved for people they didn't even know. Just to show them our support. The Krippner family owns the land on which the Black Hawk crashed. Nearby, they erected an American flag, then said a prayer. Let the Lord be with them. We're just sitting at home not doing anything, and, and I thought uh, it would be a great idea to just do something constructive for the families to let them know that we're thinking of them also. Already they are planning a permanent memorial. Just let the families come here and if they want to look at the site and stuff like that, they got something that'll always be here for them if they ever want to visit it. Late in the day, the Krippners were back. Wasn't quite done yet. There we go. With an addition. Looks good. Brightening the same skies. Yesterday darkened. Now it's complete. We have seen similar acts of kindness throughout this area. This is a tight-knit area, this area around Marty. People very connected, and they are doing what they can to help. Sharon, you joins us from just about a mile from here in what is downtown Marty. That's exactly right, Boyd. What you said about it being a tight knit community ever since that crash yesterday afternoon, this small church and school has become a central gathering point. And earlier, the Red Cross was here and so many different law enforcement agencies came through here as well. This is, I think, uh, first time I can remember this much activity. A small church in the middle of it all. Father Ron Wyron says since Thursday's Black Hawk helicopter crash, his church has been busy. Maybe numb a little bit or just it's overwhelming a little bit. And you're just trying to say, well, what can we do to at least assist in the process? He says the small community of Kimball and the surrounding areas have been generous with food and water donations. You know, I think people are dropping off for um, the people who are working on the scenes. Uh, so this investigator is done, done at the site. Um, suppose media as you're coming through. Uh, it sounds like some's going to go to the families. It sounds like their division's having a gathering tonight, so uh, some will go there. Father Wyron says they are all navigating through this together and that he's ready to listen if anyone needs support. It's very sad. Um, and I always believe that's not something God caused, but that God's going to walk us through that and uh, be willing to, you know, if it's not the time to share what you were feeling exactly, but, you know, come back and we can talk about it more. Just to say, you know, uh, we're here and it does make sense. It doesn't make sense. The Minnesota National Guard says that they will have more information to share tomorrow afternoon in a news conference. That's where we might be able to learn the names of those killed yesterday. Guys. All right, Sharon, thank you. And stay with CARE 11 for continuing coverage on the Black Hawk crash. We'll have another live update ahead tonight at 6, and we will be posting new information as we learn it on all of our digital platforms.